Hello everybody, I thought today I would talk you through my A-level sketchbooks because I was looking at them yesterday and I thought it would be really helpful if I had seen other people with similar kind of sketchbook work to me because I honestly watched so many sketchbook tours and never saw any that did their work like my school did. We very much took our sketchbooks to be more art pieces than actual sketchbooks which I know you're not really meant to do but I thought it'd be an interesting perspective to anyone else. I got full marks and I got an A star so I thought this would be obviously this end of looking at what you'd need to do to get the final work. I think I did art craft and design. Hold on actually I should check that. Yeah so my A level title was art craft and design so it might be different for other people what the expectations are if you're doing fine art or I think there's a couple of other set ones. Um, photography is one of them which I did also do so if anyone wants to see my photography work I can do that I can show you that because I all have all of my journals and sketchbooks for that as well. Um, but anyway I thought I would just show you what I've got. My camera won't show the entire page, so it's going to cut it off a little bit. I'm really sorry about that, but hopefully it's fine. Um, My first project was botany. So this is my cover page. These were done in watercolour with then some pen, I think. Okay, this was all done in year 12, and you're going to see how much I improve. Looking back at these pages now makes me cringe because they're just not to the standard the ending is at but I first started looking at Eastern, Rem Remedy. Eastern Remedies this was pencil pen acrylic paint and then exotic plants um I really wanted to do something with the black background and I don't think it worked that well <laughs> but I think these look quite cool because they went quite thin I think if I'd done loads of them that would look really cool then I looked at the artist Megan Triantifalu who we based pretty much our entire project on so this one's watercolor acrylic, acrylic, coloured pencils, watercolour I think, and then these are her pictures, that one. And then I did a full spread on kind of being inspired by her work, I don't think this was copied by anything, this was my interpretation of her work, that was all done in acrylic. And then I looked at the colour amaranth and the kind of history about it, um, so this is the amaranth plant, so are these, this is from Paradise Lost which references amaranth and this is the chemical symbol for amaranth so it was looking into a lot of history as well this was me creating my final piece that i was then going to paint which we did on i think it was 1.2 meter squared piece of paper and you'll see that afterwards I'll, I'll also insert a picture but this is my photoshop process so this was what I was going to be painting finally. It does actually have a bit of Megan Trentifalu's work in it because we edited them all together, which I didn't realise at the time. I'm not sure is great that I have that in it, but my art teacher was like, it's fine. So we also didn't realise. I don't know. Um, so this is me sampling different techniques. This is me doing some observational drawings in pen. Then I looked at Teal Sievers Kiva, Sieval Kivas. Um, so this is me continuing on some of her pictures with more painting. This was my interpretation of her painting. This was another big interpretation of her painting. Okay, I'm just covering up here because it says where we went, but we went to a local forest and just did some observational drawings. This obviously wasn't done observationally. I dislike that immensely. <laughs> then I looked at Hannah Woodman. I actually really like how she does these and I think the concept of these are good but if I do them I, if I did them again I'd do them differently but this is with quink pen and hv pen and pencils then I looked at botanicals through the ages so I looked at the oh my god how I forgot how you say that the Aaron Feeney portrait I think that's how you say it by Jan van Eyck and the La Primavera by Botticelli and this was the first time I'd ever done portraiture. And this was the first time I was probably, prob I was properly delving into acrylic. So this was me very much trying a new skill here. But I remember at the time being very proud of these. Um, this is also gold leaf, which you will see a lot. I wanted to look at different types of fruit. So I looked at apples with Adam and Eve and 
his Jorah's work. I think that's how you say his name. And then I also looked at pomegranates and the Hunt of the Unicorn. So I painted this and I started by copying every single flower that was on that, that tapestry and then realising that was not possible. So I just started making up the flowers. I, I'm still quite proud of this. I think if I did it again now, it would probably look better. But as I've not drawn or painted a pomegranate since, I'm quite proud of it still. This is me looking at the more modern uses of fruit in art. Then I had to do a project over the holiday of one of the half terms and make a garment piece, which was going to then be used as my for my next project. Um, so I was doing design ideas. I disliked these and my art teacher disliked them and that was not a great day. This is my sampling for my art piece. This page was not great. But more my final design and then this is my progress for making it this went through so many changes it did not look like this at the end i scrapped this completely oh there we go this was me doing another fa another final design because i disliked it so much um my art teacher also hated these and told me that I looked like justin bieber that was a great day as well um and this is what i ended up with and i do actually really like this i think it's really fun then this is my progress during the entire time of doing this sketchbook, up until now, we had been doing these 1.2 meter squared paintings. So this is mine. I will insert a bigger picture of it. We did it with acrylic paint and yeah, just acrylic paint. And I actually do really like how it turned out. Um, it was the first time I'd ever done properly big acrylic paintings and I'm pretty proud of it still. Then our next project was classical portraiture. This is where the barrow pen ran because I sprayed this with hairspray to keep it fixed because it's pencil. And I, I almost cried when that happened because I was really proud of this at the time. Anyway, sorry, that was my title page here. Then I moved on to making a garment, the little flappy bit. So these were paper samples and then if you can see on here this is where i've put my designs and there's a couple more underneath if you saw um and then these are all my samples my sample pages were getting better at this point um they weren't at the start um this is me making my costume piece basically final piece for this project was to do a giant i don't know how big it was but i'll insert a picture of it and i'll insert a picture of me for scale but anyway it was to do a giant charcoal self-portrait of us in a renaissance style um so this was me making my garment i actually really like it and this was me taking pictures for it oof um that is bad this why is my ear actually well something proportionally is not right my nose isn't right okay printmaking this is looking at alison lambert i loved printmaking it was the bane of my life every single time I did it but I actually I actually love it this was doing mono printing um and it was so cool we had this massive like printing machine that we could use so I did quite a few of these and it was basically to fill up space in my sketchbook because why not then I looked at Leonardo da Vinci because obviously he did all of the studies on human anatomy. This I like. Um, at the time, this was the best portrait I'd ever done. Probably still is, but I think I probably could do better now if I tried. Um, these, mm -mm, no, not a fan. Um, this is like a zoomed in part of my large self-portrait. So this was me um, just kind of ta sampling and testing out. So. I don't know if you can see, but there's ripped pieces of paper all stuck down and layered. And that's how we made our final piece. We basically would draw a bit. It would look absolutely perfect. And we'd stick a piece of paper down on top of it and then do it again on top of that. And we'd keep on adding layer and layer and layer until it looked quite distorted. And honestly, it looked really cool. I, I really liked our final pieces. Oh, there it is. These are some progress pictures of me making my final piece. So again, draw drawing this entire time and from, from here to here, I was making this. I think I'd finished the first two projects by Easter because Easter was when lockdown was and I just 
finished it all by then because I started a new sketchbook and a completely new project which honestly is incredibly quick to work and I think it only worked out that way because we had such a small class there was only four of us and um we did non-stop work basically um so you know this is an extreme of how much you could do again this leaked and ran because of this and it even went through so that's a bit annoying this is me looking at some sculptural portraiture so this these are some pen drawings pencil drawings i don't know if you guys can see but the improvement already between this and at the start of the book is absolutely insane let me just find sorry but this page and this page i mean it's incomparable the improvement in my opinion this is me looking at juliet clovis and i love her work these they're these beautiful sculptural pieces which have got these honestly beautiful designs on them um so i wanted to look at this and i did some little kind of just studies from it and then i looked at johnson sang i'm not sure if i'm saying his name right but i did these which i dislike but i remember rushing them then i wanted to look at gosh i don't know how you say it kintsugi um but basically we did a mold of my face this is my face we did only half of it but it would have been quite cool to do more and then i cracked it and i stuck it together I had to use gold paint because I didn't have any of the materials you would use in an actual Japanese practice. But in the Japanese practice, it is basically when something breaks, it's the art of reassembling the broken broken pieces with... You could use gold, silver or platinum. And it's basically the art of, even though it's broken, remaking it is still something into still something that's beautiful. So I looked at that. And that was the end of book one. I'm just editing this now and I just want to clarify what my final project is about before I get into it um, because I don't think I talk about it enough. Basically I wanted to show how different things can be seen as beautiful to different people and how there are some art pieces that you can stand really far back of and it can look perfect. You know there's not a brush stroke out of place but as you get closer um, everything is actually different to what you originally saw so it was that kind of idea so as you'll see I ended up looking at the thal thalidomide nightmare and how the children were born with missing limbs and I also looked at different cultural practices like Chinese foot binding and I also looked at completely different things like diseases um, and all of which I kind of tied together to make my final piece. But I just wanted to pop in here and just say how and why I looked at these things, um, because obviously they are important topics and I want to talk about it sensitively and um, in a positive way. I started looking at corporeal deformities and these really cool art pieces. Yeah, these were some characters that Leonardo da Vinci created. If You can see this one's got horns, you know, so. I did some studies on them and then oh it was a wonderful day <laughs> my art teacher produced a book called the sick rose and it was great it was basically a load of pictures of ancient diseases which to be honest i find incredibly interesting don't know why but i do so he gave it to me and he was like just look at this and i was like thank you sir so this is what i did and honestly i really love this and these two not so much but this one I do this was the start of lockdown I remember doing this in lockdown um yeah these are all watercolor and there's white pen on this as well this was me making it look making myself look like I had some kind of disease did my own diseased makeup first thing and then I edited it to make it look worse than it was but I just used Oh gosh, I can't remember what I used. I used special effects wax or something like that. And then I painted them. Then I dislike that immensely. Mm. They are okay. And then some side ones. So it's kind of the before and the after. And if you could, can't tell, these are my costume piece that I used in portraiture. So I'm linking it all in together. I'm being clever. <laughs> these are some samples 
This is a bad sample page. As you can see, I filled it in with writing. This was me doing some more diseased makeup. This was me doing it fully on Photoshop. These are bad pictures. This is sad. This was then me doing acrylic studies of the diseases. This is quite cool. I, yeah, mm, maybe not as much. That's my hand, actually. I only have some rubbers, so I'm just gonna cover them pictures because it's of my mum and I don't think she'll want to be seen. But during lockdown, I had to make my own cast using Algenay, which is what was done on me. But this was quite scary because I was like, mm, pff, this is on my mum. But anyway, it turned out fine and this was my process. I basically wanted to then add diseases onto the onto a physical cast. Uh, so this was, this was interesting to do on my own at home during the middle of a lockdown. This is what I ended up doing. I started by trying to do actual diseases and then it just didn't really look right. So then I ended up adding gold leaf over it and I thought that looked really cool, but it was too plain. So then I looked back at the work of Juliet Clov Clovis and added some of them beautiful pieces that she puts on hers. Um, and actually the process of making it was really cool. If you can see here, some of the alginate got stuck to the cast, which meant that it already had these kind of diseased areas, which I then continued on. So honestly, the process of adding the disease in was really cool to me. It started off as just a face and then it kind of had all of the things happening to it, had the disease, it kind of started to get fixed and then it became something beautiful. Then I did life drawing, some still life drawing from a, the BBC had a TV show on where you could basically do the life drawing with them. So I did it from that. This one was just done in however much time I needed, but the rest of them are done in time. This was me then looking at the, 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 the oh my gosh, this is such a hard word for me to say, the thamil, thalidum, the thalidomide nightmare. There we go, that kind of works. Because this was basically where pregnant women were given thalidomide as a pill to help with morning sickness and it ended up causing the children to have deformities when they were born. So I started looking at this as another version of deformity and how it happened. Um, there were some pictures of the kids when they were little and some of the prosthetics they had. So I ended up drawing these. This is the only other time I'm popping in, but I just want to explain what this page is about. Basically, it was to look at Mark Quinn's work that he did in, I think, 2007. And basically, he made a incredible sculpture of Alison Lapper, who I mentioned on the page. Um, and that is what you can see photographed. And basically, he noticed a connection between old... Um, Greek sculptures or different sculptures and how when the limbs have fallen off um, they are seen as incredible they're seen as absolutely beautiful and he wanted to draw a connection and say that people who were born naturally that way or people who have surgical procedures and end up with missing limbs or things like that that they should be seen like these sculptures that have changed over time which is why I wanted to look at this particular topic. I titled the page Thal Thalidomide because that is why Alison Lapper was born that way. Um, and when Mark Quinn messaged her asking, she was very reluctant at first because she didn't want it to be seen negatively. However, after hearing Mark Quinn's story, after hearing what Mark Quinn wanted to show, um, she supported the idea um, and then found out she was pregnant and he was like, that's even better. Um, so that was displayed in Trafalgar Square, I believe, in 2007. And I'm not sure where it is now, but it is an incredible piece from what I've seen. Then I looked at Chinese foot binding because in Chi ancient Chinese culture, they would bind their feet to make them smaller. So it would break their bones and it would compress their feet. As you can see here, they have really, really small feet. It was something that was seemed as the most beautiful. The smallest foot you could have, the more beautiful you were. So I did these little studies. I then edited my hands. I did a little photo shoot of my hands and then I edited them and then drew them. These took forever. Right, this is now coming out of lockdown. This, we are out of lockdown. This is when I looked at Agnes. I don't know how to say her last name. I can't even read my writing. That's great. But I did these in charcoal. I really love using charcoal. Then I looked at some charcoal schools. This is me edited behind a school. A bit traumatising. I'll be honest with you. But this one's cool. 
that one's just of a school and then I did some observational drawings of schools here we go if you can't tell I'm taking it back to the basics like this is what everything looks like underneath and this is where the process to my final piece was kind of taking me which you'll see a bit of some designing I think coming up in a minute yeah it's coming up um so this is pen quink and white pen this is biro pen and this is pencil I like this page a lot and then we have more observational schools this is charcoal and more of that layered paper um muji pen these two are both acrylic and muji pen I think that's everything on here the rest are pictures right this is me doing my photoshop progress for my final piece I decided I wanted to show the progress of someone becoming slightly more distorted and deformed by kind of animalistic qualities so I took a lot of pictures of different things so I had pictures of schools I had pictures of I think it was all pictures of schools actually and I edited them onto my face so this was going to be the first one not too much was changed but a little bit slightly more change you can see I've put hair on my arm and then very changed this is where I'm fully I fully become the beast and my plan was to do three massive charcoal pieces like I did for my portraiture final piece then I did some sampling because I wanted to make my final pieces get even more distorted as they went along so I looked at different methods to do this this was another one of me doing just a final test thing. I hated doing this. It was at a point in art where I was getting quite bored and it was getting very overwhelming that we were getting close to, well, we weren't that close to the end of the year, but still. Um, and this just felt like a waste of time. But actually, this looks so cool to me. So I really do actually like that. Oh, I never wrote a title. Oh, wow. This is my favorite page. Uh, like out of everything this was at Christmas in year 13 I remember that because I was doing it while studying for mocks the mocks of which the mocks were cancelled because lockdown and everything but these are both pencil drawing and I spent hours on them and I am still impressed I'm still impressed because I spent so long on them even if maybe I could do them again now I don't think I spend that long drawing something like that maybe I would but and this is um a piece on Sat satyrs which i did with um muji pen which i also really like and this is gold paint and i love gold paint but i was looking at um satyrs and pan's labyrinth then i did another full scale piece i don't like this as much this was me testing using gold paint on it because i suddenly thought that might work i didn't love it <laughs> more sampling again sampling with gold sampling with gold paint oh my gosh I forgot to say as my three pictures got more distorted I wanted to then add more gold within each one I don't know if this is making much sense but basically the least distorted picture would have very little gold but the most distorted picture would have a lot of gold so a viewer could stand further back see maybe slight distortion but a lot of gold and as they move closer they see oh this has actually got a lot of alterations to the person beneath um and it is not just a nice picture full of gold then i looked at joseph loughborough and i love these they were so fun to do this one was me copying one of his pieces of work and i love it i think it's so cool it's something that i don't know if i could do out of my head but i'd love to try actually all three of them are copies of his work but it's just beautiful but yeah so I did all three of these using charcoal and then the gold paint but honestly his work is incredible I would definitely check it out if you can my final pieces so as you can see more gold is introduced within each one so this is the first one second one third one um as the distortion increases and that is the end of book two Okay, so you might be like, Izzy, you've already done your final piece. Yes, that is true. However, my art teacher likes you to do more than one final piece, which was good. I enjoyed it. Um, so this is me doing my second final piece, which I didn't end up making because of lockdown, but because 
of lockdown, I could claim that I was going to make it and it was fine that I didn't make it. So I decided I wanted to look at a journal, a cabinet of curiosities, if you will. And basically as if I was the creator of this beast that was my final portraits, basically as if I was the mad scientist who had been doing all these experiments on these people to make these creatures or I had found these people who were slowly turning into these creatures and I was studying them. A bit like Arthur Spiderwick, if you've ever read Spiderwick, or about, if you've seen um, Guillermo del Toro's Cabinet of Curiosities, it was heavily inspired by that. So this is almost like, the, this was as if it was the front cover of my big journal. So it's got my name next to it. <laughs> I also love this page. This is me looking at evolution and Darwin. So I'm looking at natural history. It's almost, this book is very much me being the scientist. So this is my studies of birds and how they've evolved and how this can be then related to what I've seen in these creatures. So these are acrylic studies, watercolor and pen, pen and a bit of white paint. These are like acrylic, watercolor, yeah. I love these though. I think they're really cool and I'm actually going to do another sketchbook page on birds because I just think they're so cool. Then I looked at mythological creatures. Love this. Mm, this is okay but why? Why did I do a cross? Eh, okay. But looking at how in mythology we have found creatures and you can see their different attributes and how they look. Then I started testing. So at this point, I decided that I was going to make a cabinet of curiosity myself and fill it with all of these things that I'd found. So this is me testing things that I could make. I looked at Joseph Cornell and his own collections of what, like wonderful things that he'd find and put into boxes and honestly, incredible. So I made these little things. Yeah, just collecting stuff really. These, I actually had forgotten I did them and I saw them yesterday when I was looking through these and I thought they were really cool. But these are my kind of um, design ideas and I did them in watercolour and I really like them. And I also looked at Wendy Aiken and her little box of curiosities. I think this might be it. That's it. Wow. However, we did art history. So this also got submitted. This is an accordion, accordion book goes like that. Every two weeks we'd have an art history lecture and then we would write down everything that was said and then we would do our own spread of it, of our interpretation, and we'd also get given pictures to use for it. So, can you see all this? First one was the history of colour. So it was very much not a place to do good piece of art. It was a place to do very quick studies and interpretations of what's being said. Even so, it was nice to do nice-ish pieces of art. I definitely didn't interpret how we were meant to do this exactly how I think my art teacher wanted us to do it, but it was fine all the same. So we looked at the history of colour and then we looked at the... We also had the longest titles in the world, but this was the Paleolithic period, which was really cool. This is pencil, just a bit of watercolour. Then we looked at Egyptian art, which was really cool, really interesting. And then we looked at Greek art. If you can't tell, this is going through the ages. Um, so it started off with cave paintings and then, yeah. Early Christian art. These were my first portraits, maybe. Or maybe I did these the same time as them first portraits I'd ever done. So, yeah. Hindu art. I don't know if there's pictures on here that can't be seen. I might just cover that. I don't know what's allowed to be shown. Um, but Hindu art is very explicit. If you've never... Oh my gosh, I just ripped that. If you've never seen Hindu art before, a lot of it is what we would deem explicit now, um, which is interesting to look at the comparison, really. Um, then we looked at insular art. Chasing unicorns. I love this one. Not necessarily what I did, but I loved learning about it. It was really interesting. This was, again, the work that I looked up with pomegranates. Then early Italian art. So this is getting into the Renaissance era. era. Northern Renaissance. When I did this, this was the best portrait I'd ever done. 
and then the baroque period this is quite a gory period of time um but it's very good for women's strength um this is a painting this is not great um and then if we flip it over these are the last few I feel like I've been talking for ages. This is Romanticism. I love Romanticism. Romanticism is one of my favourite art periods of all time. It is just absolutely beautiful. The colours, oh, it is wonderful. If you've never looked at romantic pieces, have a look because it is just stunning. And then Japanese art, again, incredible if you have a look at it. And that's it. I thought there was more. So yeah, this just goes on and on and on and you can kind of flip through it like this which is really cool right anyway I think I've been talking on and on and on then but I thought it'd be better to give more insight into what I've done rather than just kind of showing you the pages because sketchbooks are very linear and you have to follow through them and understand what's happening to see where the project takes you um but regardless, I hope everyone enjoyed. If you're doing A-level art at the moment, good luck. My younger sister is currently in year 12 doing her art um, and she is struggling just as much as I did. It is a lot of work. And if you're considering doing it, it is a lot of work, but it was my life and I loved it. So if it's something that you enjoy and you want to commit to, do it. It is definitely not something you can just take for a fluke subject. You have to have a passion for it or just know you're going to be able to put the time into it because otherwise it's not going to work out for you as well if you don't think you're good enough let's just look again at the comparison for my first and last page because i vote you are good enough okay because let's look at that let's look at this barely any details not very intricate at all and then these <sighs> yeah the improvement you will see if you do art every day in two years is immense. So I highly recommend doing it to anyone who's considering it and good luck. And if anyone wants any more details, just stick it in the comments and I will try and answer the best I can. If not, maybe I'll do some TikTok videos. I will link my TikTok below. So I hope you've all enjoyed and I shall see you all very soon. Bye!